Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Amanda Ziede with Washington Exec, and with me today to discuss how situational awareness and intelligence can help address global security challenges is Benji Hutchinson, CEO of Babel Street. Thank you for being here today, Benji. Thank you for having me, Amanda. Of course. So I'd like to start by asking if you can first give us a brief overview of Babel Street, what you do and what the company specializes in. Sure. So Babel Street is a national security software company. We have our roots in um, the all source open source intelligence community. So we got our start about 15 years ago in the threat intelligence business. That's where we started the business and that's our foundation. But since then we've evolved in a number of different ways and we've had a, a really exciting shift in our business recently. And we've had a double down refocus on risk intelligence. That is really the core of what we do. And we work with a lot of different national security customers and other segments of the commercial sector where risk and um, detecting threats or bad actors is paramount to their business and operations. All right, makes sense. So what are some of the top global security challenges that we're facing today as they relate to the markets that you oversee? So one of the biggest threats we see is the pivot away from the counterterrorism mission that's been happening over the past decade. Uh, we've seen a, a, a really fast acceleration of that trend. So today and in the future, the threats are going to be near peer or peer adversaries to the United States. And so that is on the operational front. And we've seen that change pretty dramatically over the past five years. And look, we see a lot of our customers doubling down on mission sets that support those different areas of that threat. So um, obviously threat intelligence, uh, open source intelligence is a critical component to that. I would say that's one of the biggest trends that we see on the operational side from the requirements front, but also I'd be remiss if I didn't point to AI. Just like everybody else, I think for a long time, we wondered whether or not it was going to be a trend and something that would come and go. And, and I think we all can, can surmise that it is not a trend, it is here to stay. And the dramatic change in technology and offerings, it really is changing the landscape forever. And yeah, we'll get to AI in a second, because as you said, we can't talk about technology in the space without touching on AI. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, but before that, uh, I want to ask how open source intelligence helps to address some of these challenges and increase global situational awareness, real-time analysis, those types of things. Yeah, so here at Babel, we focus on three use cases to kind of drive home how we support a lot of our customers. The first one is threat intelligence, and that's the core traditional OSINT all source intelligence use case. The second one is people, identity, and investigations. So at the core of a lot of challenges that either commercial customers or national security customers face, they're trying to find bad actors. They're trying to detect fraud. They're trying to know their customer set better, EKYC. They're trying to detect money laundering. They're trying to detect espionage. And so it all comes back to bad actors for us. And so that's a core part of what our software can help people do is to detect a lot of those bad actors based on the data and the data sources that, that we collect and curate. That would be the second use case. The third use case is supply chain risk management, vendor vetting and contested logistics. That is a whole new front that is riding the back of a trend around deglobalization, onshoring, and the disruption of traditional supply chains as we've known them for the past 30 years. So, you know, the world went through rapid globalization in the 80s and 90s, and uh, that continued over the past 20, 25 years. But now we see a reversal of that trend, and a lot of people are looking to, to do direct investments in the United States or rewire those supply chains and build next generation technologies. So you take those three trends, or excuse me, those three use cases, that's really the way that we go to market. And, and that's, that, those are a lot of the big ticket items that we talk to our customers about on a day-to-day -day basis. So then how is AI uh, most urgently playing a role in this landscape? Yeah, listen, uh, so data is a modern day weapon. And so those who can gain better access to better data, vaster amounts of data in real time, that really is a core pillar of what we do in our business. And AI is at the heart of a lot of that. So the traditional OSINT threat intelligence business allowed people to build software platforms like our own, where you had traditional sources and methods uh, of collecting data, 
curating, enriching that data and storing it and serving it up to users. But there was a lot of filtration that had to go on. There was a lot of manual processes to normalize and standardize the data and put it into a database or a format where it could be searched and used usable. Well, AI uh, renders a lot of those techniques ancient. So, you know, we deploy AI, whether it be generative AI or agentic models to allow users to use natural language processing prompts just to interact with the software like you would any other AI platform. You just create a prompt and ask what you want to know, ask the question as opposed to searching for keywords constantly, trying to find out where this piece of data or a needle in the haystack might exist that would help your investigation. AI is gonna render that more like a conversation. And that is exactly what we're rolling out in our platform. Mm -hmm. Our flagship product is Insights AI. And so uh, that, that software allows users to do it. And, and we're in the midst of rolling that, that capability out today. Yeah, we've been having so many conversations recently about the use of AI, both as a benefit and also as a risk, it in kind of increases um, together, which is unfortunate, but the reality of our, our thought landscape today. So are agencies leveraging AI-enabled open source intelligence for situations like threat awareness, fraud prevention, anti-trafficking? Um, and how do you recommend that they integrate these capabilities into their systems if they're interested in doing so? It's a great question. I, I think agencies are, I think I would answer that question in two parts. The first part is how are they using it and how are they taking advantage of it? I still think we're in early days. A lot of the con conferences and shows and, and customer meetings that I'm involved in, they understand the importance of AI and in, in many ways they're already using it. I could point to a couple of different ways. Uh, for example, our, our platform has been AI enabled for a very long time. It was more around how to process uh, foreign languages and convert that into English and make it usable or enrich the data. But they were more of older approaches uh, that we've that have that have been overcome by the newer approaches with generative AI and agentic models. So um, all to say, some of those workflows have not been updated yet with a lot of our customers. They're still working through how to deploy it. And uh, there's a lot of talk around it, but they haven't really gotten to a lot of the efficiencies yet that I think we're going to see in the next six to 12 months. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a good AI product these days, it seems like, um, or they have some sort of offering. But the real question is, can they operationalize it? Can they put it into effect? Can they work with government customers to realize the real uh, value behind that AI and not just have it be buzzwords uh, mm -hmm. that 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 one day they aspire to, to deploy. I'd say that's one thing. The other thing is a lot of our customers are still learning how to use it appropriately or, or efficiently. It's still fairly new. So, you know, um, and in some instances, if you recall in the past couple of years, uh, you know, some agencies have, have barred it outright from being used because they're worried about their data ex escaping well, uh, or being, you know, put into a cloud where it can be trained against. And so I think a lot of agencies have had to catch up. They've had to put policies and procedures in place to make sure that their sensitive data isn't uh, pushed to somebody else's cloud or, or, or trained against, or there's the right protocols and, and procedures uh, to safeguard that data. So a lot of that has been uh, in, on the back burner over the past year or two, but I think things are accelerating at a faster rate now. And um, I know, like I said, for us, we've, just gotten our our updated versions of our software ready to be pushed out. Uh, we're talking to customers and showing it to them and rolling it out. And um, it's I would say it's still early days. We still got a lot of of, of road to 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 run and um, a lot of room to run. And I think agencies still have a lot to learn. Yep, absolutely. I mean, you know, you mentioned insights, but any other ways that uh, Babel Street is working with the intel defense communities to kind of help them harness the power of AI-powered open source intelligence the way that they can as we kind of slowly move into this space? Yeah, so um, there, there's three broad buckets of, of products that we go to market with. The first one I've already re referenced is Insights AI. That's our flagship SaaS offering. So we offer that as a service. Um, and um, we push that out to our clients pretty easily. We get them a seat license and they're off to the races. They can use that for investigations or to create um, analysis or analytical reports. 
And um, it's got a nice uh, user interface. It's pretty intuitive and easy to use. That's the first way that we go to market. The second is uh, with our APIs. So a lot of the data and services that are underneath the hood for Insights AI, we offer those via an API. So if a government agency already has a program or a system in place and they want to add richer data, they want to add better people data, identity data, supply chain data, they would come to us and say, we've already got a system. We don't need a second pane of glass. We want to bolt in your data feeds uh, that are usually in near real time, depending on which category of data. And then they want to combine that data with their data to make it richer and to uh, provide a better risk score. So that's the second way. Um, and the third way is basically creating bespoke data sets that people lack. So a lot of people come to us and say, we don't have access to this social media feed or that social media feed, and we want to do some sentiment or uh, social media listening or analysis on that front. Um, we want to go out and look for um, foreign maligned influence. We want to find if there's any foreign uh, uh, you know, uh, influence money out there that's, that's being hidden um, or there's money laundering or, or uh, that type of uh, nefarious activity, we would go out and create bespoke uh, methods to create that data and serve it up to our customers. So those are the three primary ways that we support our customers with our technology. And uh, like I said earlier, you know, AI is just adding an immense amount of value because it, it speeds up a lot of those processes and it, it, it enhances our ability to, to, deliver more value to those customers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Benji, thank you so much for sharing your perspective on applying AI-enabled open source intelligence on very important and uh, uh, increasing threat awareness, fraud prevention, anti trafficking, you know, all the things that this, uh, these markets are working uh, to fight against. And of course, for, for giving us some insights into how Babel Street is helping them do that. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks so much for having me. Of course.